In this video, we'll calculate the present worth of an investment in a particular piece of equipment using after-tax cash flows. So this brings us closer to uh, real-world uh, calculations. In the beginning of the course, we did lots of present worth calculations using cash flows, but we didn't really take into account the ramifications of tax. In this problem, we will do that. I'd encourage you to pause the video, read the problem, and when you're ready to see the solution, restart the video. In this problem, we learn of the company that is wanting to buy this new tester. And the tester has an upfront cost. It has, will result in some savings. It also has some operating expenses. And we're also told the company can sell it at the end of five years uh, for a certain salvage value. So let's go ahead and start the problem with a cash flow diagram. So we'll use a five-year uh, horizon, and we're told that the purchase price of this equipment, which will be a down arrow on our cash flow diagram, is $45,000. We're also told that the equipment will generate a savings of $23,000, and it will have an associated cost of operating of 7300 dollars So, and they, these will occur in each time period. Now, I'm going to not draw the rest of these because we'll do a little bit of a trick, and I'm going to take the net of the savings and the operating costs, because these ca two cash flows occur at the same point in time, it's perfectly valid for me to simply subtract the 7,300 from the 2,300. So I'm just gonna cross that out, I'll cross that out, and I'll say we'll just use the net value, which is 15,700, and that will be our annuity that occurs over five periods. We're also told that the equipment has a salvage value, so we get a little bit of money at the end, and that is $5,000. We're also told in the problem that the company has a tax rate of 42% and they have a MAR, that's their minimum attractive rate of return, and this is an after tax, an after tax MAR of 12%. So the first thing we're going to need to do is to convert this cash flow diagram into an after tax cash flow diagram. Then we'll use a present worth method of analysis using a MAR of 12% to see if this is an attractive investment or not. So the first thing I'd, I'd like to do is calculate what is the after-tax present worth of the first cost. I'll write it like this. Um, the present worth of the first cost, and maybe all and all of these will be after tax. So the, the present worth of the first cost is going to be equal to, well, I know that I have a negative $45,000 that I have to spend at time t equal to zero. That's already the present, so I don't need to apply any factor to that. And then, this is the main trick to this problem. I need to take into account the future savings as a result of the depreciation expense 
associated with the purchase of this equipment. That's kind of a complicated idea. I'll say it again. The purchase of the asset will generate a future stream of cash of tax savings that is directly related to the amount of capital cost allowance I'm allowed to claim uh, in a given year on my income statement. So we can do a little, a, a quick calculation here, and, and I'll, I'll write in, um, let's, it, it, by the way, it says in the problem, we're to assume a straight line depreciation. So I'll, I'll do it right here. Um, assume straight line depreciation, and we're going to assume that the value of the asset goes from 45000 down to zero. I know we have a salvage value, but we'll treat that uh, separately in this case. So if you think back to our book value versus time graphs, we're going from 45 down to zero in a span of five years. So we're going to assume this. If we do that, we can say that our depreciation expense that occurs in each year will be the same. And really, it's just $45,000 divided by 5 or $9,000. So if we have $9,000 per year of capital cost allowance, now, pretend for a moment that we're, we're not in Canada, so we're not using that half-year rule. We're not using declining balance. We're just going to suspend uh, judgment for a moment, and we're going to say that we're in a fictitious tax environment that uses straight-line depreciation and doesn't have a half-year rule. But let's just say that we have $9,000 of capital cost allowance or depreciation expense, I guess I should write there, per year, then our yearly tax savings will be the $9,000 times the marginal tax rate of 0.42 or 42%. Or and that gives us a tax savings annually of $3,780. So that would appear as a positive cash flow on a cash flow diagram. And so really we've got this annuity every year we're saving 3780 in tax because we bought this asset. So if we look at just the purchase of the asset the cash flow diagram looks something like this. We have a $45,000 outlay at the beginning. And then we save $37.80 every year in tax because of the depreciation expense. And the way that we'll deal with that over here is we'll just take the $37.80, we multiply by the P given A factor for 12% and five years. Okay. So uh, we can work out what this is. So um, this factor you can find in your table, it's 3.6048. If you plug that in here um, and use a, make sure we use the negative for the 45,000, we end up with a present worth of the first cost of negative 31,374. So all of this is really just dealing with the after-tax present worth of the first cost. I'll come over here and deal with the after-tax um, present worth of the, the net savings that occur. So the cash flows, the net cash flow of $15,700 as an annuity after-tax, well, that's going to look like this. I'll call it the present worth of the savings is going to be equal to, we already used the net number here, so really we have 15,700 times, and remember um, the way that this cash flow 
will appear on our income statement. This is the before tax cash flow. I'll need to pay tax on this amount. So to convert this amount to my after tax cash flow, I multiply by one minus the tax rate. Okay, so for any cash flows, any before tax cash flows that occur during the, the, the project, we multiply by one minus the tax rate, and I'll write that here, one minus T, in order to convert that to after tax. But it occurs every year, so really it's an annuity, and to convert this to the present worth, I'll use the P given A factor, 12%, and N equal to five. And the P given A factor is the same factor that's that point, or 3.6048, and if you work this out, you should arrive at a value of 32,825 dollars. So the present worth after tax of this cash flow stream is 32,825. And we have one component left to deal with, and that's the present worth after tax of the salvage. So the salvage value, again, is a positive cash flow of $5,000. To convert it to an after-tax cash flow, I multiply by my one minus tax rate. And then rather than use the P given A, like I did for the other one, I'm gonna use the P given F because this is just a discrete payment occurring once in the future. So my P given F for 12% and n equal to five is appropriate to use. And that factor, well, you can look that factor up. Um, I'll leave that to you to look up in your table. You should arrive at a value of $1,646 as the present worth of the $5,000 salvage value after tax. The last thing remaining for us to do is to find the total present worth. So the total present worth of the purchase of this tester equipment is gonna be the sum of all of these other cash flows. So I'll just write it out quickly. So my minus 31,374 plus 32,825 plus 1646. I should get a present worth equal to $3,097. This positive value, so remember from our present worth analysis, if we use the company's MAR as our, in our time value of money calculations and we arrive at a positive present worth, that means the investment at least earns the 12% MAR. So here we are, we've got a, a healthy positive value. That means we should buy the equipment. So in this problem, we've, we've calculated the present worth after tax of the purchase of an asset that has a continuing benefit over time as an annuity and a salvage value.